Trying to help me? You gonna help me? You gonna help me? Get it off, girl. Hey, where's the helper going? Where's the helper going? Come back. Come back. Hey, this is Will. Uh, I hope everybody's doing okay. So uh, this video, I'm gonna uh, tell you the difference between a uh, RV 440 and a car 440, um, mostly a B-body. So I'm going to be uh, installing a 440 off the RV that, that I bought and just trying to see the differences as far as you know what will work in my car what won't uh, i'm trying to do a low budget low budget drivetrain swap um so i have a 318 right now in my car this is my 69 charger currently tucked away in the garage looking nice and pretty uh so this is the rv right here that's the rv engine 440 uh, so like I said this is going to go in my car so there's a lot of differences now I'm just going to get into most of them not all of them uh, but just kind of want to see what it does in a B body I haven't seen anybody just slap that in, in a charger and see what it does if they have I just haven't seen it so I thought it would be pretty cool to just uh, get it in my car see what it looks like see what it does right all right so the biggest difference in the exhaust manifold is just uh on the b bodies they come up and they tuck away here i uh, drove to houston a while back and bought these i believe these are the correct ones i'm gonna find out but uh these do come off the car 440 so before and this is after i have installed the left side of the car b body i believe these fit in uh challengers too i think uh they fit 383s as well but uh you see how it, it tucks away it's just uh way different than that one so i knew i was gonna do the swap so whenever they come up on uh, facebook marketplace i went ahead and got them but uh yeah if you just notice the difference it is way different. The reason the, this uh, side is, is tucked away that, like this, you don't have much space. Uh, you have your power steering. Uh, um, pump here. And you also have your steering box down there and your brake booster and your reservoir all right there. So there's not much space. On the right side, this manifold, I was looking at it. It looks pretty tight and compact. That one might work on a B-body, but this is the one that I bought. There's not much difference on them besides uh, this one seems to come up a little bit more. Seems to come up and tuck away just a little bit more. Um, but uh, This I might work. I'm going to go ahead and swap it anyways for that manifold that I bought but that's the first big difference there's the exhaust manifold so there you go if you see here this is the rv oil pan the sump is to the rear of the engine um i have here is a uh, oil pan that i removed off of 440 that came out of a uh, chrysler 368 uh, chrysler 300 so i believe i'll be able to use this one if not i'll have to get another one but you see the difference the sump is not as uh deep on the car one and, uh, i believe that's to be able to fit it under there it's a lower clearance of course and a tighter fit another thing is that these old pans mount the sump mounts towards the front like this so 
that's uh, before. And that will be your after right there. So oh, that's the difference there. <clears throat> All right, so uh, uh, this is not a teardown video. Uh, I have already torn a similar one, a 68 one down on my channel. You can go back and look at that video. I just want to show you all the differences. But uh, on the sim that has on each one, if you look at the last three numbers, it tells you what uh, cylinder head you have and you can Google it. But uh, these are 452 heads, which are typical motorhome RV heads. They have uh, extra cooling passages uh, around the spark plug, I believe, to avoid detonation. Uh, just keep it cool all around so for the harder loads. Obviously, you know, running, pulling an RV. And if you're towing, then that's even more weight. So these are more, more of a high torque, lower horsepower engines. So these are typical motorhome heads. Uh, if y'all seen my last videos on the 68 one that I tore down, I had 906 heads, which are the better heads for the, for cars. They're, uh, uh, higher compression the 915s are even better from what i hear they're higher compression but they were they were like on 67 68s uh this one right here is a uh, off a of 79 rv right here that i still need to get rid of and uh yeah so i'm gonna keep these heads see what they do from what i read you can uh you can make these somewhat decent by porting them and getting them machined. I'm just gonna clean them up and put them back on, see what happens. And uh, not too much worried about the lower compression. Just wanna see what it does. I just wanna white smoke a little bit. So if it does have high torque, then I should be all right. So I'm gonna get these removed so I can show you the pistons and the bottom of the head here. All right, so the cylinder head is off for the pistons. Uh, imagine those notches are means that that goes towards the front these come up a little higher than i thought uh, but i do believe that's as low as they go on the cylinder so on the car ones they the pistons go a little lower therefore creating more compression i think the car ones are still flat flat top if I remember correctly but uh so far so good just kind of checking the engine out this is the first time that I see it give me a flashlight all right so uh, on these The later blocks have that uh, bigger water passageway uh, compared to the older ones it wasn't as big as this slot here so they beefed up the water holes this is the 452 head you see it again on that side but see these are slightly domed that way uh, I believe the 915s are solid here creating more compression but they're not horrible heads at least they don't look like it but that's how those look i'll try to get a comparison with the 906 and 915 so you can see the difference on the heads A lot of select there in my opinion so most likely we'll replace that the timing chain and gear all right so uh here's another difference the uh, oil filter screen tube you'll have to get one uh the b bodies usually comes out and it's just straight in the front so i have to turn this over 
and the screen on the RVs comes all the way down, so you'll have to get one for a B body or a car for this one. And obviously, it doesn't stick up as much, it should be lower. All right, last but not least is the camshaft. So, the camshaft is different as well as an RV cam uh, or you know, for a motorhome RV. Uh, a lot of people also replace this the camshaft to raise the compression, replace the pistons. This uh, engine here had a little less than 60,000 miles. It doesn't show it. It shows like a lot more. Uh, it looks like they didn't change the oil much. So I got a decision to make. I was wanting to reuse these pistons. Taking them out, they don't look too bad, but this one, I mean, a couple of them do concern me a little bit. Uh, I'm gonna clean them up, see what they do. Uh, but uh, the camshaft is different. Now that the pistons are out, I can take a good look at the cylinder walls. You can see on the bottom, you can see all the cross hatches, but up here, you don't see much. They're pretty much all gone. Uh, so a couple options can try to hone it out or bore it out. So. I was wanting to just hone it, but I don't know, it's not, like I said, it's not looking like a 60 mile engine, 60,000 miles. Looks more like 150, in my opinion, or more. They just didn't do a good job of, a, of a, doing maintenance on this engine. So those cross hatches down there is what keeps the oil on the cylinders. They're all gone here, so. Plus, you see a bunch of spots like the oil was mixed with a coolant a little bit at some point, or it's just real dirty oil. So, and also notice on the pistons itself. So, if you're gonna buy a motorhome RV engine, you probably need to buy it with 30,000 miles or less. As like I said, I was expecting a better condition engine. I mean, it's a awesome uh, engine to rebuild. It's an awesome condition to rebuild uh, and get machine just not uh, not the best to re reuse a lot of things like I was planning to but I you know, just got some decisions to make uh, we'll see we'll see all right so I have the water pump off so earlier I was holding it uh, sideways <laughs> so the difference is the it, it does come through the top on both uh, the inlet the return is actually towards the driver's side on this one is to the passenger side so what you could do is reuse that one if you want um, just the radiator that you get for the big block because another thing you'll have to get is a radiator because the small block radiator is smaller just make sure that you have the return on, on the passenger side I want it. I want it to be on the driver's side as it should be. So I uh, went ahead and got this one. Uh, another thing, this is an aluminum housing. Weighs about five pounds. It's light. That one right there weighs probably double. It's pretty heavy. So it's really up to what you want to do. I'm gonna show you the box here. So this is a Chrysler aluminum water pump housing for BRV and Hemi V8 engines. So this one's for a 440. And this is a RB engine, so should be good. All right, so the carburetor is a 9636 SA uh, Carter. I'm gonna see if I can find a rebuild kit for it. This is a 625 uh, CFM, so uh, it's actually on the lower side. You want to, obviously, more fuel for more power, but with having such low compression, at this point, if I can rebuild it, it'll just make more sense eventually once I, you know, upgrade, get more compression, get more air. I'll need more fuel. I have to upgrade the car, but for right now, since this is a budget build, I'm gonna try to see if I can find a rebuild kit for it. Uh, the cam does not look bad at all. It looks good. The 
crankshaft looks good too. I'm going to take that to the machine shop to get polished out and get checked out. But the oil pump has some wear on it. Like I said, they didn't do a good job to change out their oil. So I'm going to replace the oil pump. And uh, like the, I'm going to get the billet uh, aluminum one for the rear main seal this one's hard you can tell that's been leaking for a long time uh, that is a problem on the on 440 engines all bid blocks i think you know but uh i'm gonna get the better rear seals so i don't have any uh rear main seal leaking uh lifters look good no wear there's uh no wear at all so i'm gonna reuse those the push tubes have a lot of rust for some reason, not sure why. I'm gonna replace them. Like I said, just uh, I'm gonna re-ring it, buy new rings for the pistons, clean them up. What I did was I just got a whole bag of Ziploc bags out here and I kept all the bolts together. So I know what the intake manifold bolts are. I know where the oil pan bolts are are all together it's just a lot easier to keep track of everything uh, all right so um, going from a small block to a big block you are gonna have to get a like I said a 727 big block transmission uh, you should have a 904 or a 727 small block in this one is a big block the bolt pattern is different you will have to get a, a radiator and you'll have to get a bigger rear end uh, this right here is an eight and three quarter um, i have a, a smaller one out in my car right now i believe it's uh, uh seven and a quarter i believe that's right but uh you also the the k on the b bodies uh the k member the same is the same with a small block and big block so these are the motor mounts for the motorhome and i got these from 440source.com um, i believe you'll just have to reuse the nut and a couple bolts but uh you will have to get uh, new mounts so if you see this it's the bracket it's a lot smaller than the one that's already on there. So you will have to get new motor mounts for both sides. I went ahead and got that. My next video, I'll lay it all out on the table and show y'all what it all uh, it's gonna take to assemble it and what all do I have and, and going to get to assemble it. So, uh, you know, hopefully all this information helps. So I, uh, I will uh, record a future video of uh, everything that that I'm gonna use and how much I'm gonna spend for the rebuild, I'm gonna get pretty in detail with it. I will uh, film the whole uh, uh, rebuild section uh, as far as the rebuild part. I mean, uh, I didn't do the tear down like I said because I have already torn one of these down on one of my prior videos. You can go back and look at that. Uh, but any questions, I usually answer to all the comments on my videos. So if anybody has any questions, let me know. Hopefully I didn't miss too much. And if I did, go ahead and add it in the comments section. I'm sure everyone will appreciate it. So my final uh, analysis on the motorhome engine is uh, uh, it's worth it if you spend wisely. It's just uh, make sure you try to get it as low miles as possible. It really depends on where your budget is. Obviously buying new pistons or a stroker kits always better it just depends where your price range is at i'm gonna give final pricing on what all everything's gonna take me to build uh, i'm gonna reuse as much as i can rebuild as much as i can and try not to uh, replace everything brand new i know there's a lot of mopar fans out there that you know won't want to have something nice just don't have all the money to spend so uh this uh video is for you guys maybe hopefully that uh, this uh helps but uh I always wonder what the differences were with the, uh, you know, RV 440 and a car 440. And hopefully this video helps. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, give me a call. Uh, just uh, 
thank you very much for watching all my videos hit the like button hit the subscribe button hit the notification bell icon so you can get notified when a new video comes out and like i said i just truly appreciate every single one of you and god bless